All right, let's do another round of analyzing that hideous strength with reference to works of philosophy. And in this case, it's a work of philosophy by C.S. Lewis. It's a book called The Abolition of Man. It's a wonderful book. It is uh, good to read it parallel to Alastair MacIntyre's After Virtue. And uh, proper exposition of The Abolition of Man takes some time. You could consult the cartoon version on this channel, though I confess it is an aesthetic atrocity, and I should probably remake it at some point. Now, um, The Abolition of Man is a wonderful piece of moral philosophy in which Lewis defends the Tao. The Tao is a word he borrows from Confucius, but he means by it something more general than what Confucius meant. The Tao is simply the doctrine of objective value, the doctrine that there are some moral truths, and that they simply are true. Uh, they're fundamental or foundational. They are, to moral reasoning, what the law of non-contradiction is to all reasoning. You reason in light of these principles. You don't reason to them. Lewis explains that efforts to reason to them from principles uh, independent of the Tao, to build up the Tao, to build up the doctrine of, uh, of morality, to build up an ethics without appealing to any sort of fundamental moral truth, is uh, a fool's errand. He explains how the efforts to do so, these, uh, uh, these philosophical efforts to justify ethics without recognizing any objective moral truths that were fashionable in Lewis' day, Lewis explains how they are failures. They don't work. These efforts will not, will not succeed. And he explains that this leaves us with only two alternatives, to recognize the Tao or openly reject it, go the Nietzschean way, and uh, deny that there are any moral principles that we ought to follow and simply do what we want to do because we want to do it. Now, uh, Lewis further explains that since in this modern era we have replaced virtue with science, at least to a very large extent, we now use science to achieve happiness. We use science to make of the world what we want of it, rather than use virtue to make of ourselves what we ought to be in hopes of achieving happiness, which is the old way, the Aristotelian way, the Socratic way, the Buddhist way, the Christian medieval way, the Sufi way, and so on and so forth. Uh, pretty much all the pre-modern philosophers. Stoics, Epicureans, I'll toss out a couple more. And of course Confucians, uh, Hinduism as well. Uh, all the old books Lewis read from the pre-modern world were like this. But in the modern world, we followed the way of Bacon and Descartes. Descartes also has some videos on this channel where he presents this, uh, this new ethics. In the modern world, we have taken this route of Descartes and Bacon where we use science to make of the world what we want of it. And that's how we attempt to achieve happiness. Now, Lewis uh, hypothesizes that there will come a time when science has sufficient power to get what it wants. And using it to achieve happiness, and according to this hypothesis at least, rejecting the, Nietzsche, uh, rejecting the Tao and following the Nietzschean way, it is inevitable that there will be a point or a short time when a very few people who have control over the, uh, the relevant technological tools will reshape human beings, will recreate human nature according to their own whims. According to the hypothesis, they will not be doing it according uh, to any sort of standard uh, of what is good because, according to the hypothesis, they've already taken the Nietzschean way and rejected that standard. And so they will reshape human nature according to their own whims. It's a terrifying prospect, given a beautiful depiction in many science fiction stories. Speaking of which, I recommend a book, Science Fiction and the Abolition of Man. Subtitle, Finding C.S. Lewis in Sci-Fi Film and Television. I'm one of the editors of the book alongside my buddy Kevin Neese. It's available uh, in many places where fine books are sold. It's available from Christian book distributors, direct from the publisher, Whip and Stock. It's available at Amazon. It's available from Barnes & Noble. And shout out to Hearts and Minds Books in Dallas Town, Pennsylvania, a very fine bookstore. It's available there as well. Now, uh, this book will explain a lot of this and um, in a little more detail than I can do in this particular video, but uh, I think we've done enough overview of the abolition of man. He's setting us up with this warning of what happens if we reject the Tao, what will happen with science. Now, I only need to say, in closing, 
since this is supposed to be about that hideous strength, and since it is about that hideous strength, that in that text, that hideous strength, the abolition of man is given a literary depiction, or at least the early stages of it. The NICE, the National Institute of Coordinated Experiments, is conducting the abolition of man. That's what it is doing. And also, this is a demonic agenda. The abolition of man, cross-referenced between the abolition of man, the book, and that hideous strength, the abolition of man, the non-fiction book, and that hideous strength, the fiction book, is to be connected to this other concept of the materialist magician, cross-referenced with the screw tape letters, that fictional book, and that hideous strength, that other fictional book. These two, uh, these two terrible things, the abolition of man and the materialist magician, are linked. And on this topic, I recommend one essay in particular from that book. It's the essay in the book by Dr. Lewis Marcos. Again, the book is Science Fiction and the Abolition of Man.